Hey guys, and how's it going? And uh, welcome back. We're, I think we're in like the third part on this. This is a like a late 60s, early 70s Bieber. <laughs> it's a amphibious vehicle that uh, I grabbed at a uh, barn find about uh, three weeks ago or so. And we've done some kind of preliminary stuff to it. The engine was beat. Tires were flat, didn't roll. So we're slowly trying to bring it back to life. And the last video we in we decide we yeah we did that we dissected the engine and found that pretty much everything about it is beat so it doesn't have many redeeming parts left to it to even try to save it would cost more to build put this engine back together than it would be to find a new one and a new one's not cheap either so having said that um, I made the executive decision to move forward and do something a little different with it why because it's mine <laughs> and i can and it's what i want to do so um a little dark in there but the compartment is fairly tight a lot of people were talking about uh putting a uh, snowmobile engine a um golf cart like a harley setup that has starts forward and reverse the problem with those i looked at them the the assembly is kind of big and without modifying a bunch of the fiberglass on a boat that's supposed to float that you don't want to modify the fiberglass on, it becomes a bit of an issue. So uh, I looked at those avenues and I came up with something a little bit, I think, more simpler and uh, should hopefully work out fairly well. So without further ado, let me get set up over on the bench and we'll uh, do a little show and tell. All right, show and tell. So the three things it kind of needs is electric start reverse and a charging system on the, the power plant whatever yeah, i go and put it in its place and a problem with a lot of like the atv setups that have reverse is reverse is like first gear well this thing's a boat and to back the boat up in the water you need i think a little bit more rpms on the tires to be able to go do that so um it needs to have you know a tall range in reverse as far as it does forward so we'll get to that in a second the other two things are electric start and a charging system so this guy right here on the craigslist has electric start dc and because it has electric start dc it also has a uh, 12 volt output that makes it so that it has a charging system and can charge a battery back up so it has a starter relay and wire coming off of that it has a key so this thing is electric start so it takes care of that part of it and it takes care of the charging system part too so the horsepower of the original engine, I think it was around nine and a half horses, around eight and a half. The, I'll, I'll get it in that in a minute, but the, the, the structure of the boat, we'll keep, continue with this. All right, so that needs to have a variable speed transmission. So a variable speed transmission, the best thing that you can kind of go with on the cheap is a CVT type setup or torque converter. And that's what this is. It's the typical uh, number 30 Comet Clutch knockoff. And they are good for up to 11 horsepower. So I'm going to try to maintain this thing, you know, everything within its correct realm, what the body was designed for, the engine I have, and then the, the forward, uh, forwarding components. And the way these guys work is that's on the engine. The engine's up here. You can mount it any direction you want, pretty much. And um, the clutch is tiny on the front side when the engine's spinning. That's on the other side, but yeah, so that's the pulley in the front. As the RPMs kind of come up, that guy squeezes together, and it's a tapered belt, kind of squeezes the belt, and that belt goes from that size to that size. Well, the other half of the belt, instead of being, bear with me, being that big, shrinks down to that big so that's your infinite gear ratio changes as needed then it has an output here's the sprocket and that would normally be your output to your rear axle or wheel whatever it is so that's that guy you say okay we still need reverse and they make something for reverse too they make uh, this guy which goes on the end of that guy and has a lever on the top of it that has neutral, forward, and reverse. I'm not sure if that's the right direction, but. And then it goes output 
to whatever uh, um, drive that you have going out of here. And in our case, we're going to try to make this drive the jack shaft that's already in it. So that's what we have. We have a uh, charging system, engine, electric start, transmission, and reverse. And can't forget, tail light. <laughs> uh, so the problem that we're going to go and dress is start building this drivetrain. But the problem with the engine is I got the engine at uh, this one on Craigslist and you know typed in electric start uh, engine and saw it popped up. And it was this and it was a Honda that I was trying to get, but it was 13 horse. It would have been more powerful than that clutch setup, et cetera, et cetera. So we have this. Um, it was used in a chipper, I think it was, and it jammed up. And the first time it sheared the drum flywheel on this side. So it was a little boogered up. And I guess they ran it again. They jammed it on something else. And as far as I understand, it sheared the flywheel key uh, on that side. But I paid 50 bucks for it. Worst case scenario, if this engine can't be fixed, we have the charging system, we have the electric start with the key and all the pieces of that can make another one run. And I do have another you know, block out in the back. So why don't we get into this engine, make this thing so it'll run. Once we get it to run, we'll start looking into how we're going to set up the rest of it. Can I like a plan? All right, let's get into it. And sometimes it's more fun just going awry and building what you want from you know, pretty much a junk carcass. Which is essentially what we're doing. This thing's pretty rough. It's not like we're saving a cream puff here, you know? At least that's what I like to do. Turn the fan on in the background because I'm trying to block out some road noise behind us. And it's 90 something degrees out with like 76% dew point. So we're gonna we're gonna hibernate in the garage. It, kind of makes it more interesting. I guess it's depending on what you're into. But uh, they kind of change it up and mix it up to see what you can come up with. And you know, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. But it's a journey. Having fun trying things. And that gets you to the next one. You know, you try something on one. It also makes it so that You never really run out of material because everything, one thing that you try, two more things come to mind. That's what happens with the, the bike builds, the custom bikes. The, uh, every one you do, like when you think of that, other things pop into your head. Let's go. I have a full time. Ass is off. Let's uh, get our something to take that off. All right. Where are we? Let me get the cast line on. I kind of want to leave it somewhat disassembled too, just for space. Let me get rid of the exhaust. Actually, I'm going to run it. I'm going to leave the exhaust on for a bit. Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? We are wanting to get this cover off to gain access to the flywheel. I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking about what what I want to do with it and how to put it together. I got some hiding up there. I think there's one more. I don't know. Because that starter, do we have anything? Not a mouse nest. Imagine that. It's a rarity. That looks weird. That magnet is... I hope it doesn't have a mech crank. No. It's not on this side. Just 
just looking at the way the the coil is mounted it's got a big air gap on that side and it's almost touching on that side you guys see that starter gear looks good let's get impact gun up in there that's a good sign not even a key in it he did say you know it was bad he probably took it out do I have it's a funky looking key too you might um I have to make one I bet you know that there's a spare of everything I need right there. I think we should go and rescue this engine out of here. Ah, yeah, I gotta go grab that out of here and bring it up the hill. Steal some parts. Hey, right, so that's the engine we bought. And this one was a freebie that I've been stealing parts off of. And lost its carb, the uh, fan shroud, a bunch of other things I've taken off of it. So between the two of them, we should have one we should be able to put back together. But I would prefer to do that one. That one's got a one inch shaft. This one's a three quarter. And the parts I bought are for a one inch. So I guess what it was. Yeah. So without further ado, why don't we get the pull start off of this and pull start, electric start off of this and get that. Uh, Hopefully, the key out of there. We may need to go get ourselves a little something to whack it with. Right, watch out, let's try this lefty. That's all the hardware that was sitting in it around it, stuck to the magnet. Cause it was thrown in the box when I got it. That coil has to come off before the starter. Before the flywheel can come out. That's why that's all on an angle. Come the papa. Oh, it's just a regular key. Good. At least we got the exact one that we need. All that just for that, right? Yeah, we might as well take that coil out of our way. Sure, they're a different size. <laughs> right? Everything's the same but different. I like when there are two different screws on the same one. All right, so this is the flywheel of the one that did not spin. I think we can walk that in later. Where? So that the flywheel should be tighter. I don't see any damage on it. Should probably make sure that that key wants to drop inside there. Might throw a file over that. Right tool for a job. Do we have wiggle? Yeah, that guy got a little egged, huh? Can we make one that fits tight? it. I'm gonna uh, see if possibly we can grind one. 
I think what I want to try and do is go with a longer one and we'll grind the base of it to a curve. This just ramps up on a curve on the end of it. So if I think we can extend the key further back into here where it hasn't had any damage, it should lock it up again. So that's what we're gonna try anyway. It doesn't work, it doesn't work. It does work. Good. Those of you with dental issues, you may wanna be forewarned. Yeah, that's warm. Ah, so I'm thinking something like that. So we got the right ramp for the most part to go up inside there. I think we are a little too tall, so I'm gonna go shave off the top. I cut down the width a little. I think that cradle is longer than the other one. So again, I'm getting up into the meat where it, it didn't rip out from last time. You can see all the damage from where it spun. Let's get that on there and get the flywheel back on and see if we got, see if we're snug. What, the problem with it having a little bit of play in it, every time the engine accelerates and decelerates, it keeps doing this a little more and then finally event, it, it kills the key. So that's why you uh, were taking the time to do what we're doing. Yeah, see if you can get that on there without pushing that whole thing back. Make sure I got the right flywheel. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, sometimes it pushes the key back. it uphill yeah you could probably I'm gonna try tapping it in like you did on the other one oh we could check we could check height out too that way you guys can't see anything can you I think we gotta knock a little bit more height off of it. That's the problem. Didn't have enough room yet. Alright, let's go. I think we should crush all that down together with the nut. I think that'll be our best shot. I'm gonna try driving it in just a little more. Give me a tiny one. A tiny one. I'm not gonna say it loud. That's just the wheel coming forward. Yeah, I see we run that puppy home and we go with that. Let go over, kill. Let's get that coil buck buttoned up. Let's Let's get it off the magnet. Back her up. So there's a business card under there. Business card. Advertise here. All right, let's, let's 
Line that up to where the magnet sucks it down. See if that worked for an air gap. Close where the magnet is. What do you say? We get a jumper pack and we try spinning it. Connected to the bench, probably a good idea to make sure there's oil on it. Looks like it, looks clean too. Yank enough. Should probably take that plug wire off just in case she decides to go. We don't want her to go yet. Actually, probably just could have done that too. We'll throw a jumper pack on it in the starter. We use the the power switch on the jumper pack. Hopefully, as the crank. Can you see? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Could be my jumper pack though. No ground. The ground is not good. Actually, I saw that arc to the bench. That's no good. My ground was good. I had a hot lead touching the bench. Looks pretty good. I'll make check for wobble. Look pretty fine. Huh? What do you think? I don't know if there's any gas in the carp. Find out. Oh, looky, looky. A little more gas in it. I'm forced with the dilemma of putting gas from this into this. You always take the top off and use the vent. What do you think the chances are we can do that? And kind of dump it into it. I think it'll work. Problem is, how do I stop? <laughs> Not too bad. A couple of drips on me. I know. Why me get a funnel? Let's back feed that. So she won't take no more. Racing fuel we're putting in this baby. I wouldn't suspect, you know, we could pull a float ball and all that kind of stuff. I don't think um, this thing sat around much. I don't believe it's going to have a much, a bunch more issues other than, I shouldn't say that, but I just burned myself. I'm just going to throw a rod now. I think we're full. What are we doing? We are going to make sure we got spark and we can jump it. That'll be just fine. So now we get that cleaned up so that we can at least see what we're working with on this side. <coughs> Noise alert.
little choppy here. See how it uh, slides over that. Let's see what we got. Guys hungry? Snug, but not super tight. I'm probably going to take some. <laughs> Love taps. I'm going to take some emery and polish that guy up, take some of the highs off of it. I don't get too overzealous, the engine shouldn't fall off the bench. Probably should clamp it. You get the idea. You're not going to watch that for 10 minutes. You know what I was doing. Polishing my... Give ourselves a fighting chance on that. I don't want to nail it on there too much and have it. with a file for a bit sometimes it's not the shaft's fault sometimes it's the slot come on might come down it with a uh, a cut wheel Yes, I know I'm not running the file right. Calm down. I will bring you back when I have a solution. Fifth time's the charm. That's what we get now. Ah, oh, come on. Alright. Time for some lithium. Black shaft. 
Joke. Come on. Alright, let's go. Tuning up, where'd it go? Call that close enough for success for me. That guy. And that guy. And that guy. And then a bolt to hold it all together, but that's the clutch on the front side. But we need to mount. Where is it? We need to figure out where that guy now is going to go. We could take that muffler off too now. Don't need that. Get rid of that. And because we're going to make our own exhaust system anyway. We'll pop this back off and I think we're going to try to turn it up as much as we can because we're going to need room going for where the jack shaft is in the sprocket right here. Thank. So I've been wrestling with it a little bit trying to figure out first where I would want to try to mount that setup What direction in out, up down as a flip around this way um, And then I took out the gearbox photo in reverse and started looking at that and there's no way that goes into the end of that There's just not enough shaft sticking out <laughs> so I took the Axle apart from the top there and took the rear sheave clutch whatever you want to call it of course it doesn't fit all the way down but i have a feeling that this is supposed to get it set up on here it's got the threads on it kind of tightens back up then it has some brackets i see a bracket that's roughly that dimension whether it goes that way or that way i don't know um basically what i'm getting at this came with no instructions whatsoever so it's one of those games of let's see what fits where and then it has this adjusting rod which i believe is going to be what is for the tension i would think it has probably i don't know maybe two brackets that attach the upper to something upper <laughs> this is what you got right here this and i thought there was one more bracket maybe not so, oh there it is. this is going to be for the cables mount so that's going to have two holes about yo far apart Yep, not those guys. So it would have to be something that controls the cam and shift the cables go to it. That's for the gearbox. I guess that's going to go something like that or like that or, you know. But in general, that's kind of where those guys are going to go and work the cable. I'll show you what's going on. And then how does this go on to the rest of the machine? Again, the only thing I see is that one long adjuster and long bolts. So I am going to go and uh, look at some pictures on the internet. Hopefully I can find something. All right, so I spent a little bit of time online. You know what I figured out? Nobody has figured out how to put one of these on this clutch setup. <laughs> so uh, you're kind of on your own. What, only when I saw somebody made some angle brackets and kind of hung it down here below and, and guesstimated on where everything went and, and that was it. And they had it rocked like, like that. Yeah. The, the shifter was in the back and they kind of tucked it under in this area. So I think we're going to kind of do the same. We can get rid of that. We don't need that. And uh, 
Unfortunately, I gotta clean the shaft up on this one so the clutch will slide up on it. I also seen somebody else who just kind of ran, hooked the clutch up regular, just ran from the sprocket on there, ran it to a sprocket on here, and so ran a chain to there and then another chain down to what it was gonna go drive which seems like a big pain in the ass too, but we could also do that. Plus we have a, we're restrained for room, so we may end up start putting a buggy on the bench and start assembling stuff and looking where things can kind of fit in. But let's see if we get that on there. And maybe kind of spin it around, get rid of that plate and uh, see if we can kind of dial it in a little. I'm gonna freehand you a little bit. This is the other motor, same setup, but. So the only picture I saw, it showed the shifter all the way back again that is level plane so they had it they fill on top of course and then we're going to need to make the, the biggest thing is trying to make the dimension from here to this shaft right on the money agreed and not not angled or any direction square to it and probably some adjustment which is you know I guess what their attention was to give you that so what if we take this guy take that off and we flip it around because we know that's the dimension from the center of the crank that we need to be and we kind of rotate that down over here but we flip it the other direction and then we install We install that shaft into it, and that will kind of tell us where we need to be, right? Either that or kind of where it is now. The same idea. Anyway, if we flip this bracket around and try to figure out where to place it and have it fit, then we can start building some bracketry off of it. Sound like a plan? It's the only one I got for now, so. Okay, so conceivably, went right about there would be where you kind of need to be right but there's another issue I want to go put this guy on there and see that play that's in there that's because that shaft a different size than that so you are not going to get that clutch on there I don't believe there's going to be much of a success rate of anybody ever putting one of these together I could be wrong but uh, this easy project just turned into get my ass kicked again and uh, probably would have been better off to try to fabricate our own stuff which I think is what we're going to end up doing I guess we can go back to putting the CVT together and then the little sprocket that comes out of there, have that drive this and have this drive whatever sprocket down to the lower level. The problem with that is again, it's just gonna take up a lot of room. That's what we're doing. So we don't have much more of a choice than something like that. And then, you know, literally, what are we doing? We want to be clutch back to the, the little gear is here. I'm going to go drive a sprocket on here, which turns that. I guess we can kind of. I guess we can kind of do that too. I didn't want to do that, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do, right? Yeah, so I got that clutch thrown on there. You can see what we got. I had to grind the uh, yellow drain plug, plug for the uh, fill plug for the oil, grind the top of that off so it would fit. And it's just mocked up as goofy combinations of hardware, just trying to hold stuff. But, so we could put a sprocket there. Or maybe there. I got this gearbox. We're gonna want that. 
with the fill somewhat on top. So we can either tap off maybe to that guy and then down to the jack. The only thing is just adding another <clears throat> another set of linkage. You know, trying to hoping that that just mounted on the back of that and then you had a photo in reverse. No, no. No, no, you don't get that. <laughs> It'll make you feel like you're getting that. <laughs> That's not what you get. So let's... What do you want to do? You know what we should probably do is get the exhaust out of the back of the machine and walk over with the engine, kind of set it in there, start looking at it, and see where things are going to kind of line up. Sound like a plan? All right. So to get us where we need to go, get that clamp off, split this muffler, get that exhaust system out of our way. I really don't want to start cutting on this bracket until I have to, but um, we may end up just slicing it flat just so we can get room in there to work, but let's get to the muffler out of the way. That came apart way easier than I expected. Uh, I want to take this thing and bring it outside to the pressure washer, stand it up on end, and I just want to pressure wash this whole thing, thing down on the inside of it. Which is crappy, especially when you start doing repairs and stuff to the fiberglass. You want uh, some uh, non oily surface to do so. So, I think it is going to need or dire need of a bath. We'll aid in our uh, assembly here, too. Let's um, grab the jack shaft and put that back in here, and that will give us an idea where that needs to be because that's the brick drum and set up to there and that's already been i'd like to tap into that where it is if at all possible we can move it if we have to but this mount and everything is set up for it okay that's gonna be roughly something like that i got a fairly decent amount of room we're probably having to bring it up higher no. Let me go grab it. I, this is definitely going to be in our way though. We might have to just knock that down and then start working. I wanted to wash it before that. Though. I don't know if we be doing sparks in this thing. <laughs> oh. Hey, let's see how absurd this is going to uh, drop in there. I think what pulleys would line up to what. I wonder if I could spin the motor around. Think about that. If we spin it around. And now the fan will be on the intake side that it needs to be. If we're going to make a jack shaft going down, we kind of need to be over here. Does the gearbox have? Guess we got to draw with our eyes in the air. So we would need to go from that to that, or from that to that. That should be spun around. Spin that engine around. That'd be really far forward. Okay. Kind of wondering if I can add a sprocket, kick maybe kick the assembly this way a little bit. Just add another sprocket over here. Gotta contemplate. Too bad we want reverse. Kind of moving it around, it just kind of fell into place. 
was like, well, that would work pretty good. Just hook that chain to that. <laughs> You're good. Make some motor mounts. I think we need to cut that front support support out of our way so that we can slide the assembly up into where we need it and start looking to where we can tie things together. Plus, the lower it gets, the better it is. You want the center of gravity as low as possible. So the drivetrain needs to kind of squat down if we can. We're going to take the dipstick out, get that out of our way. Maybe the muffler, actually the muffler makes a good handle to kind of pick the thing up and out of it. Let's go get the oil out of it so I can not worry about it oozing. Should we got to. Yeah, too bad. That's the braking oil, we'll call it. <laughs> That's a little metal-y looking. Good thing we got another one. Alright. Uh, let's go cut that support out. All right, so I saved you the sacrilege of the uh, sawzall, but you wouldn't fit in there anyway. I was trying to go cut it. So I shut that engine as far forward as it'll go for now, and it'll go further up once I get the gas tank plate and all this crap off of here. None of this needs to be here. Uh, basically, the fan shroud housing still needs to go back on, but uh, that upper plate and all that crap can go. So let's see out the gearbox. That would be one easy installation. Bing to bing. Simple, done. Of course, we gotta throw a, a wrench in it and try to have a, another transmission in between all this stuff. But even with that, I don't think it's that bad. Let's go. So, I think on one of two things. The, on the top shaft there, that one, if we have that one just go right down to that sprocket down below, we can uh, probably kick the motor over, what's that, about an inch and a half to the right, and that would line that one up with down below. That's one thought. Uh, the other way is if actually if you line the brackets up down below, there's actually a bracket down there, then we can come up see those two holes that's what I'm talking about so we can actually kind of square off of that and that one if we line that one directly up with that and then we need to get the other one over which we probably can do be tight the only problem also is anytime you want to go change the belt you're going to have to pull the engine because you're not going to have enough room to get that stuff off the slide off the end there and we haven't tried tw flipping it around yet, but I'm kind of liking, you know, that setup. Uh, you could feed either one, it, you know, you could drive the top one or the bottom one. Well, I am anyway. Change the angle of it. Probably something like that. Have that good to the, that one over there. I got a different sprocket for that too, the, the correct one. And then that one to the front. And it gives us an area also probably to play with gear ratios too, if we find that it's, you know, too doggy or you know it runs full throttle at 10 mile an hour on the land we can play with it a little bit what do you think i think for now the uh, next step what i would do is as like i said take this thing out and pressure wash it get all the crap washed out of it and uh make it a little bit more enjoyable to work in there and we can make more stuff more permanent and be able to weld onto things and that kind of thing. Yeah, get the nest out of it. And then as far as the um, intake, I was trying to think of, like, can I run a boot up? The, the air comes in from the passenger's compartment through this box, and the original fan sucked air in through here. This one, the fan is on the other side. That's kind of why I wanted to flip the engine around, if I could put the fan in front of there. But my second thought would be, is if this is even kicked over even further what if we just mount an electric fan in there and what will be nice about that is like even when you have a boat and you're gassing up a boat and this is essentially a boat you want to be able to run a pump that pumps air through it before you 
uh, start the engine every time you gas up or do something because you don't want the gas fumes what happens is it, it it can't raise up and out of it you know it's heavier than the air around it so the gas fumes kind of just stay in that compartment if you have a gas leak or fumes or you know open carburetor like this is going to be so what's nice is you can turn a switch on on a boat and especially after you gas up you flip it on you purge the air that's in the back of the boat that's also why they have those scoops on them too they'll have a scoop facing this way and a scoop facing that way so as the thing is going air is flowing through the chamber anyway fast forward if we install an electric fan down in there that moves a decent amount of air it'll be changing the air that's in the cabinet the cabinet anyway it can go flow and do its own thing as far as how it was designed to cool and then the lid this is the exhaust for the air not for the not the exhaust exhaust but the idea is the air is to flow out of this opening so it sucks air in from the wheel well up there comes through the engine blows to the engine picks up the heat and then exits out of here so if i power fan the cabinet so the air is constantly trying to change in that cabinet and exit here i think that would be a good um flow for it we could try it right i think that should work i think the only issue i may have is just the charging system on this is going to last long enough to run the fan nothing says we have to run the fan all the time we're getting ahead of ourselves but that's the only thing that i have kind of in mind is, is that that's going to make enough power to run and uh, maintain the fan so that's it guys i think i'm going to go wrap it up i've been babbling and i want to think about it a little bit anyway and uh, maybe come up with other solutions maybe i find something else online saying oh yeah that that gearbox just sits right there put two bolts in it you're good <laughs> well i don't think it's going to happen but uh that's why i'm going to go poke around a little bit and uh, if not, we'll just make our own brackets. I have no problem doing that. All right, guys. So with that, I'm going to go shut her down. I want to thank you all for kind of hanging out in the garage with me, having a little fun wrenching on weird crap. And uh, we'll do it again soon. Until then, see ya.